One of the things that made this channel gain any kind of popularity early on was the fact that we focused on helping people that are either just getting into the hobby or have already been part of the hobby for a while feel comfortable with modding their blasters and gain the confidence to do it, sometimes even with resources they might have in their own home. I decided to split this into a two-part series. Today we're just going to cover the essentials when it comes to modding your first motorized blaster. Let's get into it. Before we get into today's video, I would like to congratulate Ezrael HF. You're the proud new winner of a new amazing little blaster. This is the Busby Air Warriors Night Tech. I made a video on this blaster a few months ago. One of the best combinations of gimmick and performance that I have ever seen in a little blaster package. Congratulations, buddy. Speaking of giveaways, guys, we are doing a big one at 4,000 subscribers. Thanks to you guys helping us with this incredible growth. We gave away some blasters at 500 subscribers, 1,000 subscribers, 2,000 subscribers, subscribers and now the next big giveaway is right around the corner at 4,000 subscribers. We're going to figure out what we're going to give away, but let's just say you guys are not going to be disappointed. So tell your friends and family about the channel, share this video, like this video, all that good stuff. Without further ado, let's get right into it, guys. So it's incredible to think about it, but it's already been 10 years since the Nerf Elite Strife hit the shelves. And for about that long, it has remained one of the staple modding platforms due to the ease of which it can be disassembled the simple schematics of how the wiring is laid out the motors the switches it's just a very nice compact design but it's also modular and it's got a stock attachment so you can actually carry it like a little carbine it's got a muzzle attachment which you can actually add some extra barrel extensions perhaps that even have picatinny for extra support it even has its own picatinny down here if you want to add some kind of a foregrip it has a top picatinny here if you want to add some kind of a side the possibilities are endless and I'm pretty sure for those of you watching that have been in the hobby for a very long time you already know that there is pretty much nothing that has not been done with the Strife. There's different shell kits that completely transform the exterior look of the blaster to the point that literally it's just not even a Strife anymore. I think there's a kit called the Worker Swordfish which pretty much transforms. You have a brand new shell, new placement of motors. It allows a lot of things. Today we're gonna take advantage that this is just such a popular platform to show you one of the simplest and cost-effective mods that you can do to your motorized blaster. And I'm using the Strife as an example, but this applies to any what we call Strifeoid. It could be a Raven Fire, a Flight CS10, a few blasters that I don't have visible here, but the Rapid Strike is a good example, the Modulus CS10, even some Fortnite blasters that carry the same powertrain. If Nerf has done something very consistently is that they have used the exact powertrain and schematic of their standard strife blaster and used it for a lot of other blasters so if you've modded a strife you're going to be familiar with the interior of a lot of these other blasters and be able to mod those too like i said earlier in this video we're just going to cover some very very basic mods that will allow you to just immediately boost the performance of your strife about 30 to 40 percent right off the bat and this is going to allow you not only to have more fun with your blaster but also play in some low fps competitive games basically it's just going to consist of a simple rewire with lock removal the addition of a five amp switch a little 2s Li ion battery that we modified to fit let's get into it guys all right guys not that it's necessary for a 2s build but the first thing i did is rewire the entire blaster with a nice healthy 16 gauge wire i harvest these wires from some tv power cords they're actually solid copper versus mixed or nickel i've already wired these motors in line we're going to delete all the locks so the only switch that's going to remain essential is going to be the rev switch let's get into it guys our wiring is complete we ran our 16 gauge wiring single switch for the rev trigger i'm going to put every everything back together just the way it was. I'm still gonna mount the original switches even though they're not wired in. I feel like it adds a little bit of tension to that door close, same as with the mag release. One little final snapshot before we seal her back up. I've got the trigger mechanism back in, our rev switch covers back in. As you can see, I got some anchor points of glue just to hold these thick 16 gauge wires at bay. So I basically grabbed one of those 2S batteries that already comes on those little cheapy blasters. I didn't wanna mess with the wiring, so I just made an adapter harness that brings this wiring harness to an XC60 connector so it allows our battery to sit nice and comfortable it gives our connectors some room to sit without any disturbance to the pusher mechanism and allows full clearance of the battery door as well i'm actually switching over to xc60 on everything i know i've been using these proprietary connectors but i just don't like the gauge so i'm going to start using xc60 because i like that they can favor 14 and 16 awg all right guys quick update i went ahead and put a 5 amp switch 
on the rev trigger. I'm gonna shut her back together. Let's get it, boys. All right, guys, we're gonna start with 2S configuration. We have Adventure Force waffle darts in here. We're gonna do a little grouping and then some chrono right after. Got our target mic set up. Let's get it. There you go guys, just a really fun compact blaster that you can use anywhere you go. Like I said, HVZ games, low FPS PVP games, plinking around the house. You can have a lot of fun with this little blaster in this basic modded form. In part two, we're gonna cover what would be the next step. I actually modified a custom made 4S battery for this blaster that actually fits using the stock battery door with no extra bulging or larger battery door required pretty cool stuff. Obviously this would require swapping of the motors, flywheels and cage for a higher crush so that we could take advantage of that voltage. I did try the 4S on this platform with stock motors and there wasn't really much of an advantage, maybe a five FPS gain. And that's because even though the motor speed is being almost doubled, the crush remains the same. So there's no real taking advantage of that extra torque and power. But on the next video, we will definitely be covering these extra add-ons, which in the way we're gonna do it, we're gonna save you a lot of money. So stay tuned for that video. After countless of requests, guys, we finally have opened up our merch shop. The name of the shop is called Foam Faction, which coincidentally is also gonna be the name of our podcast eventually when we have it up and going. We have a bunch of designs and a bunch of different kinds of merch available. However, we will rely on you guys for ideas. Feel free to submit ideas to us via direct message on Instagram or in the about me section, there's also an email you can use to contact us. We're very eager to continue making merch that is exactly what you guys want with the designs that make you happy. So if you guys have any design ideas, we would love love to hear them. Link to the merch store is going to be in the description. If you guys have any questions, you know you can always message me on Instagram and let me know what's going on. Regarding our video schedule, now that I'm pretty caught up with my backlog, I'd say we could probably settle in at a twice a week, maybe three times a week when there's additional content. Of course, we're also going to throw in our bargain alert shorts in between. Make sure you follow us on Instagram to see some additional content that we do not post on YouTube. We will possibly have a live stream slash podcast coming soon. I haven't figured all the logistics out about that yet let me know what you guys think about that is that something you would be interested in seeing not enough live with maybe other guests in the hobby let me know if that's something that you guys would totally be about just trying to get a room temperature on that from you guys other than that i appreciate you guys watching this is an amazing community we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you guys let's get to 4k and do this big giveaway i can't wait to see what the future holds for us guys thank you for watching if you enjoyed this video you're definitely gonna like this one i'll catch you on the next one stay blasting foam fam I don't think so.